Okay, so you've probably been waiting for, with bated breath about the Dred Scott decision, but you know what? It's a really big deal. And like I say, note the context. The, the fix is in. The pro-slavery fix is in. It's a Hail Mary pass designed to settle the question of slave expansion and slave citizenship once and for all. Shut everything up, end the controversy between the North and the South, tie it all up in a neat bow, and then we can just, the country can just move um, uh, down the road. Uh, it didn't work out that way, but that's what was going on. That was the attempt anyway. So here's what the uh, Dred Scott decision uh, declared. Uh, Tani reads it out loud. And um, the first uh, aspect of the Dred Scott decision was whether or not uh, African-Americans such as Dred Scott, did they have uh, any uh, citizenship rights? Did African-Americans have any rights as a citizen? And what the Supreme Court said was that no, that no African-American had any rights that any white person was bound to respect. OK, that's pretty damn heavy. Um, so you have the Supreme Court, number one, their number one finding. No. Uh, and so because of that, Dred Scott didn't even have a right to sue uh, in federal court because he's not a citizen. So this is a real misreading of, of U.S. history. You'd had African-Americans had had uh, basic political rights in the North, really, since 1776 and since the uh, writing of the Constitution. But this is what the, the Supreme Court held. Number one, that no African-American, uh, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Jacobs, Dred Scott, uh, Dred Scott's wife's Harriet, their children, no African-American had any citizenship rights and that had and that um, uh, they had no right to sue in the federal court. Um, and so that's that's number one. So that's uh, that is pretty um, that's pretty devastating, devastating. Number two, though. Tani declared that every that that slavery was property, that property that slaves I'm sorry the enslaved were property okay, that property rights are protected in the Constitution, and that quote every citizen has a right to take with him into the territory any article of property. So in other words, uh, what's happened to African-Americans in the Dred Scott decision, their citizenship has been completely stripped away. Uh, those that are enslaved are declared as property and that the owners of the enslaved can take their property into any uh, part of the nation, into any territory in the nation in the way that you could take your suitcase or a pair of shoes or a suit. Uh, or, or any other property. So that according, according to this decision, uh, there was no restriction on the movement of the enslaved because the enslaved is defined not as people, but as property into uh, any territory uh, in the United States. So um, this set off a huge firestorm uh, to radical abolitionists, uh, the uh, and, and and folks like Frederick Douglass and I'm sure Harriet Jacobs was paying close attention. It it shut out any possibility of citizenship for African Americans. But the other thing that a, a lot of Northern whites, a, a much broader coalition of Northern whites, whites, because a lot of Northern whites didn't really care about African American citizenship. But what really upset the majority of whites in the North was the result or the, this decision was that it explicitly opened up all of the Western territory, including the Louisiana Purchase Territory and the Mexican Cession Territory, as well as potentially Northern states to, to slavery. So potentially the Dred Scott decision that, that said that the, the enslaved were property, that the constitution protects property rights, and that the owners of slave can take their property anywhere in the United States because property rights are protected in the constitution. So what the Dred Scott decision does, it declares, it's an attempt anywhere to declare an eternal pro-slavery future in the United States that the Supreme Court had attempted to decide once and for all, would 
the U.S. be a free soil, a wage labor uh, uh, society, or would it be a slave society? And what the Supreme Court declared was is it opened up the door for the United States to become a slave society. Let me repeat myself as I often do, because slaves had no citizenship rights, they were seen as property, and that the owners of slave are, are guaranteed by the Constitution, they're allowed to take property anywhere uh, in the United States, okay? So radical, 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 radical decision on the part of the Supreme Court uh, with the coll collusion of James Buchanan, the, the President of the United States. And um, Tani, the Supreme Court's decision that was trying to resolve these questions about the expansion of territory, about the, the, uh, the citizenship rights of African-Americans, uh, this is a major milestone uh, on the road to the Civil War because uh, Northerners were just horrified by the implications of the Dred Scott decision. Let me hasten to add that most white Northerners don't care about Dred Scott. They don't care about Harriet. They don't care about their two kids, right? Um, I hope I've made that clear. Now, you did have a, a minority of Northern, or Northern whites that did, so let's not forget about them and let's applaud them. But the reality is that most Northerners didn't care about individual African Americans. What infuriated Northerners was the Supreme Court basically said that uh, the system of slavery could be taken into the new territories and potentially into the states where it had already been outlawed, like Ohio and New York and Maine. And so really it's an attempt to declare that the U.S. could potentially anyway uh, be a slave society. Now it's never really tested because the Civil War is going to break out in, in three years. Uh, no one really tested whether or not you could take uh, slaves into Ohio. In reality, that probably wouldn't have happened. I think there would have been, it would have uh, been so much protest uh, that it, it it probably wouldn't have worked. But nonetheless, the potential's there. The potential's there. And this reinforces this idea that um, there's a slave power conspiracy. And you know what? There, there is a germ of truth to the slave power conspiracy. It's not just all a fantasy. Because remember, pro-Southern, pro-slavery advocates, uh, even though they're Northerners, uh, support slavery and they support the expansion of slavery. It's part of this national alliance, which is known as the Democratic Party. So this sends uh, folks uh, like Frederick Douglass into absolute uh, despair. Um, he was he would often say, "I walk by faith and not by sight." Um, he had. As I mentioned uh, in my brief comments, he had always been against uh, uh, African-Americans leaving the U.S. and going to places like Liberia or maybe Haiti, you know, leaving the U.S. But he he starts to think that this is the only hope uh, for African-Americans um, uh, to leave the United States. So uh, and, and you have bitter, bitter uh, divisions in the African-American community in the north about these immigration schemes. Um, and, um, but this, the period between the Dred Scott decision of March of 1857 and the outbreak of war in 1861, for Douglas is probably the darkest moment, uh, the, the most despair, despairing uh, moment uh, of his life. 